Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. Sorry, I'm doing these videos with my head cut off a little bit, but um, I'm just trying to utilize the natural lighting because for whatever reason this morning I'm getting awful, awful lighting in my apartment. But, um, alright, so today we are doing a bunch of different videos from my buddy Scott from Boulder, Colorado. And uh, Scott <clears throat> has sent me just a pile of stuff to build sheaths for. I... Um, I did a recap video of kind of all, I guess it's not a recap now that I'm thinking about it since I recorded it first. I did a quick breakdown video of all of the sheets where you get a quick look at each of them. And that's about a 30 minute video. So if you want to save some time in the, uh, in the long run, that would be a smaller aggregate commitment than watching the individual videos. But you get a much better in-depth, close-up look at all these sheets and all these knives through the individual videos, obviously. So... This one is going to be on an El Chete from Tops. This is one of their biggest knives. It is a monster chopper. And <laughs> just look at that thing. That's about three inches wide. And uh, the blade thickness is at least a quarter inch. It might even be a little bit bigger. This thing is an absolute beast. Um, so if you guys have had a chance to use one, I'd love your opinions down below. And uh, yeah, with that said, let's kick this off. So Scott has an El Chete, obviously, and I've done a few sheaths for the El Chete. They've gotten a little bit of attention, and uh, I think part of the reason is because the factory sheath and pretty much every custom sheath out there that I'm finding when I run searches on it have the same design, which is an open spine. The reason why people build open spine sheaths for longer blades and particularly for things that have a big sweeping blade edge or like a parang where it gets wider as you get closer to the tip of the knife. The reason why you see, or kukris, the reason why you see that open spine is, <clears throat> well, it's twofold. One, it makes it easier to get your knife in and out of the sheath. Well, caveat that with if you don't bother building it. I want to I wanna say it nicely. All right, I think I think it's a mistake to build that kind of sheath. Uh, if you like it, if your customers are happy with it, by all means, continue. I'm not trying to, to rain on your parade. What I am saying is that, to me, it feels like a laziness thing because you are able to easily get the knife in and out of the sheath with that design, but you can also get it easily in and out of the sheath with this design. It just requires more work to get this design to function that way. Um, so I think that's just kind of like a production speed thing. As far as the factory sheath... You know, for the most part, I think it's accepted in the knife industry that you're not going to get a nice sheath with a knife when you buy it. If you do, bonus. If you don't, well, that's kind of just to be expected. Um, but that, yeah, that design, I think, is uh, is kind of lazy. And part of the reason why I object to it is because it's, it's just really flimsy. You can have even super thick kydex, but if you have that open spine with this much space between the rivet and the spine it's just going to be flimsy. That's the bottom line. So I like building taco style sheets with the fold over the spine because it's a lot more durable. And especially when you start getting into a multi-layer sheath, which is what I would recommend for a knife this heavy. Um, I would, yeah, I mean the, the, the ruggedness of it is just multiplied. So you get something extremely durable with this taco style sheath. And at the same time, it is I think you're no worse for wear in terms of being able to access your knife. The draw is very, very smooth, crisp and clean on this. No rattle, no play. And, uh, yeah, you can even draw it without bracing the sheath. You can draw it while it's suspended. So, <clears throat> all right, so that's what we got. Sorry for the little rant up front. I just really hate those open spine designs. I think it's lazy, and I think it cheats the the user i think it cheats the uh, customer in the long run because it's not a strong sheath design um, all right that all said <clears throat> this guy is in coyote brown for the base layer and you can see it's got coyote gray here as well as cryptech od green um, we have a baldrick attach point at the tip a leather dangler with another d-ring so you can span the two D-rings with a sling and wear it over your shoulder. You can wear it on your belt as a dangler, or you can hook these molly locks up to some molly webbing and carry it on a vest or a pack. Um, 
you can see that I've allotted for one and a half inch spacing. So if you wanted to move one of these mollies over, you can have them spaced at an inch and a half. Right now they're set up at three inches, which is what I would definitely recommend for this. Uh, just because it is so wide and so heavy, I would put it on a wider platform. These are large molly rock locks, so large Gen 3s will go through two, or sorry, through three rows of molly webbing, and obviously through two sets of rows. So you're going to have six points of contact when you use the mollies on here, which is very, very rugged. Um, should be very stable on your pack. You can also actually turn them and invert this, not invert it, but you can turn it 90 degrees and have the mollies riding like this. So for whatever reason you wanted to put this horizontally on your molly webbing, you can also do that. Uh, you can see I've set up <clears throat> with a lot of the other ones I've done. Uh, for Scott, I had a plate that carried the mollies as well as the D-ring adapter for the dangler. This one I've done slightly different. If you can see it, hopefully the lighting will allow, but on this second layer of Kydex, there's a little bit of an outcrop here. There's a build out that just allows me, it just makes an empty space through which I can put the backs of the uh, of the Chicago screws and not have them putting any pressure on the outer layer, or the, sorry, the inner layer of the sheet. So you, basically what I did was I formed the first layer and then I taped a little wood block over it and then I formed the second layer which creates that space, that outcrop there. And that's how I have that D-ring attached. I also really like doing that with uh, some bigger knives because it helps them to hang a little bit straighter. So you don't have, <clears throat> you know, the bigger the knife, the longer it is, and the more stuff you put on it, when you, when you dangle it, it's going to have a tendency to do this because it wants to find its center of balance. But this helps it to dangle a little bit straighter by moving that closer to the, uh, closer to the weight. It prevents it from wanting to, to you know, kick out like that. Uh, which I prefer. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, all right, for attachments, you don't see anything in here. This is going to be a, a an Exotac Nano Striker XL. I had to use it for a different order, so I'm actually going to send Scott one through Amazon directly to him. Uh, we have the Streamlight Protac 2L flashlight up here. Um, this one I put in there. Uh, it's very. It's definitely in there. Really solid. I would not call this an easy access item. It's in there with the double layer sheath. It just, uh, I think I collapsed the middle of the tunnel a little bit. So it's it's definitely a stiff draw. It's not that hard to use, but part of the reason why I left it this way instead of loosening it up is because we are dealing with a much heavier system. that has got a lot of momentum if you happen to be swinging it. And I don't want you to accidentally hit it against something and pop the light free. Um, with something this big, you might not even notice it. You're not going to notice the weight difference if the light comes out of there. So I wanted to make sure that that was really in there snug. And uh, that's what we got here. If you do need to remove it, you can definitely remove it. I would probably... All you need to do is get it up far enough to really grip it. Just brace the sheath and kind of twist back and forth. It'll come out pretty easy. Um, <clears throat> how I have my lights set up on sheaths that are carried with the Baldrick system is... I always point the light forward because as you wear this on a sling, and the reason you don't see a sling is because he's got a beach and tactical sling already waiting for it. So I just need to create the attach points. Um, so it's set up so that when you're wearing it on the sling, the light faces forward. And also, oh yeah, I forgot about this. Part of the reason why I made it snug in there was so that there would be enough resistance for you to hit the tail cap without the light moving on you. You want to be able to turn your light on and off without having it come loose. So you can turn your light on <clears throat> and you can pretty much hold your sheath still on the sling and have it aimed out front. You can also draw the knife, have one hand free and still have light facing out in front of you. So you do have, uh, you have a lot of versatility and a lot of utility out of that little orientation trick. Uh, not really a trick, it's just something that, that I that occurred to me a while ago building... Uh, actually, I think the first time I did it was on another El Chete sheet. Uh, I'm not totally sure on that, but... Alright, so that's what we got. And, uh, actually, I'll give you a real nice close-up of that plate there. Coyote brown and coyote gray, seamless edges. I really love building those plates. Um, okay, the last thing to show you on here 
is this device on the front. This is what I call the Universal Tech Lock Adapter. It's a device I invented which allows you to quickly separate, uh, quickly uh, conjoin and separate any two or any item that has a tech lock on it with whatever is carrying the tech lock adapter. In this case, obviously, the El Chete has the adapter, and any knife, flashlight, whatever that has a tech lock on it, you can plug into this and immediately piggyback onto this sheet. Uh, simultaneously, you can immediately separate it and <clears throat> and carry it individually on your belt on that tech lock <coughs> excuse me so uh, I created this concept a while ago called the breakaway breakaway uh, breakaway piggyback and the whole idea was that your breakaway would have whatever carry method carry clip dangler something like that pre-installed and riding on a bigger sheath and then you could immediately separate and carry it individually Somebody asked for a tech lock, and as I was setting it up, I realized that that tech lock, just being so wide, uh, looked kind of ridiculous to be in the piggyback, the breakaway piggyback that I had uh, set up for it. So I decided I would try building an adapter that would interact with the tech lock itself. And that has actually been really cool and beneficial because that means you can switch what you have as the secondary item on your sheet. So if on a given day you know that you're going to carry or you'd rather have a flashlight or a multi-tool or this size knife or that size knife or this particular knife or whatever, you have the option. As long as it's got a tech lock on it, you can install it into this tech lock adapter. So let me give you a couple uh, just real quick uh, demonstrations here. So we have the individual sheath I built for him for his ProTac 2L, which is this flashlight there. This sheath can just snap right in to the dangler, or sorry, I keep saying dangler, snap right into the uh, universal tech lock adapter. All you have to do is you just kind of turn it and yeah, I'll show you in depth here, close up, but you can see how that sits nice and deep in there, it bottoms out on that little saddle and uh, you have that flashlight in there nice and rugged and then to disconnect it, all you have to do is push upward and it slides right out of it. All right, giving you a quick quick instructional on how to put that in there. You can see that the fins are actually wider than the adapter, so you're not just going to be able to slide in from the top. You want to turn it slightly sideways like that, and then twist it, and it'll push the sides of the adapter out. So as you twist it, you can lay it down, and once it's laid down in there, once you're clicked into the track, uh, you can just slide it downward until the uh, until the tech lock bottoms out. So that's that's pretty much it. Getting it out, you literally just have to whoops, pull up and slide it up, up and out of the adapter. Um, <clears throat> real quick. Got this OHT holder. Right, so you can even have a multi-tool on your flash or on your uh, on your bigger sheath. That's pretty cool. And then lastly, obviously, you know, carrying a knife on it. So truly, it doesn't matter what the item is. It just matters that it has a tech lock specifically. This is one area where the tech lock and the combat loop are not actually compatible interchangeable items. Um, normally. I say that they are pretty much the same thing and interchangeable, but this particular adapter will not fit the combat loop. It has to be a tech lock. Um, so you can see that works out really nicely there. All right. <clears throat> so that's pretty much all I got for you on the El Chete sheath. Uh, I really, really like this knife, and uh, I'm a big fan of having a nice chopping tool. So if you guys like the El Chete, if you like choppers, I think you probably like this sheath as well let me know what you think down below and tell me what you think of the El Chete um, what do you think of it as a chopper what do you think of it as you know a, a knife in other capacities as well I know it's kind of big and unwieldy so I don't think I would try doing any fine tasks with it but I've seen some videos of people doing feather sticks with it and it seems to work pretty well uh, I would definitely still prefer a smaller knife for that kind of task but chopper batoning all the big stuff man this thing is a beast let me know what you guys think down below. Tell me what you think of the sheath. 
And <clears throat> as always, if you like it, hit that like button. If you like the channel, subscribe and comment down below. Thank you for sticking around for all my rambling and tune in for the next one, guys. God bless.